Welcome back to another video everybody. This is Scotty and today we're going to go over how to make a player voting system that uses the comparator. The comparator is a very powerful block that is a little bit complicated. Right here we have a comparator with a signal strength of 14 going into it. We have right here is the servers on 14. That light is on. If we turn this torch on we got 15 going into the side and turns it off. If we drop the signal below 14, the light will turn back on. This knowledge here, we need to build something a little bit bigger. Here, we're using the same basic principle. We can turn on this lever here, sending a signal of 14 into the comparator. And now this comparator is going to the block, coming down here, and coming to this comparator, and repeating itself around this way, going down again, around these two blocks, they're under here and up to here to the side of the comparator. So this signal here is the exact same as the signal up here. It just takes a long way to get around here. Now since it's here, we can also get the same signal on that side. So we change this one to 13. The light is off. Now if we go up here to 15, the light should turn on since that is stronger than the other one. If we drop it to 14, the same, both lights should turn on. And if you turn the first one to 15, the first light should just stay on. This pattern here can be repeated pretty much forever as long as it's in a ticking area. Now that we have that, we need something to automatically adjust the redstone signal, and that's what we have here. This uses comparators in the subtract mode. So this is 15 here. We have 15 down to 14 into the side of this. So when we flip this lever here, we get 15 in. We're going to get 14, so we get 1 going into here. So 15 minus 1 is 14 into the side of this comparator. So 15 minus 14 is 1, and it will turn on one light. Let's go ahead and give it a try. There's one. And there's a second light. Down here is the exact same thing, just as a mirrored image. And we can do the same thing here, sending one signal in. We get 1, 2, three, and four lights on. To reset it, you turn off this torch for a second, as well as the one over here. Up here is two more of those things built a little bit higher to allow for the correct spacing we need here for that redstone circuit down there, since you need an open block in between each one. And this too can be repeated pretty much forever. And now when you merge the two together, you get something like this. We got our redstone memory cell down here, connected to a basic item filter up here with concrete, and of course a subscribe block, as you always need a shameless plug somewhere in your video. So this signal will be sent up here to these comparators and from down there up here into the circuit that we built a little bit ago and sending it off to whatever you need it to do. Let's go ahead and grab some blocks here and head on up and show you this. Let's go ahead and place in a yellow block. There goes the signal and the light is on. Now we'll throw in two red blocks. This light should turn off and the red one should turn on. There we go. Let's throw in three blue, or try to throw in three blue. Our blue light is on and our red light is off. Let's go ahead and do white. There's three into white. 
the white light should turn on. Any time now. Okay, what is wrong? Ah, we're sorting black concrete, not white. I guess I should have checked the redstone before I started recording the video, because I switched it out to black concrete instead of white. It looks like we have purple in the system, so we'll throw that down instead. One, two, and three. Now the purple light is on as well as the blue, and there's a black one showing you that I did change it to black. Now what would you do with this knowledge? It comes in handy if you ever get caught up to an emergency meeting aboard your spaceship. And of course before you go into the meeting room you should always throw your enderpearl back down to its stasis chamber in case you need to be called back up again. There we go, one ender pearl in stasis. Now let's go ahead and go into this meeting room and see what's going on. It looks like we have an imposter over there. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a purple block. Here we go. Place it into this voting chamber here. And we'll get rid of that imposter over there because they are not the real Scotty, as I am. They could have tried a little bit better, but of course, we all know it's them. The votes have just been taken, and they're going to the machine to be counted. Hopefully it's not a tie, or else they'd still be here. It doesn't look like it. They are gone. Our door has just opened up. Now we can go back in on our way. There we go. How is this all done? This is being done by lots and lots of redstone. Overall, it looks complicated, but it is fairly simple. As it's basically just pulse extenders and adjusting the timings of things so things happen after something else happens. starts off here with this clock sent onto a pulse extender which will send down to here and it'll also send a signal down here to our system that does the counting of the voting. Down here once the items come through we'll start up this clock here giving it time for all the votes to be counted. Then I'll send the signal this way, raising these pistons to send on the redstone signal to the select player. Right now we have one vote on. It would signal that redstone and these observers would see it. And send a signal down here to these droppers. There's normally two items in this dropper, and they get sent over to this one. It would send one if there's one light on, two if there's two on. And then based on the signal strength, it would either lower this piston or not. And this anvil doesn't belong here. So yeah, the signal will come through here and then go that way. Let's go ahead and change this back to one. Because if there's one light on, there's only one here. There was two because the game was resetting and it's off by default. So the signal will come this way, raising these pistons. And if we see here, the purple line is on. So it would send that signal up here and around. All the way over to the purple side to open the floor down there. And there's the imposter down there in the holding chamber. There you go. There's a way you can build a player voting system that will vote off the person with the most votes. Hopefully you found this video helpful in building your own 
Please leave comments and suggestions below for future videos. Thank you for watching.